And I'm back again. Yeah, I got to come up with some type of opening catchphrase, you know? Like, uh, who's that guy that always comes on and says, uh, hey there, friends, that you, I forget the firearm guy, is that him? Um, I got to come up with something. Well, as you see, another video, uh, and I'm wearing the same shirt as, as possibly the, if the 365 thing went out. I'm wearing the same shirt, so you can be pretty sure it's the same day, I hope. Um, I don't know if I'm going to get around to actually editing this one and getting it out, but that's really not important. This video is uh, one that I had in mind for a while now. This is a follow-up to that, um, the, I guess, the, you know, the, the video I made about the, the, the jobs that, that my guns have, and I made reference to a nightstand gun as opposed to a home defense, that, that type of thing. And it got me thinking that, uh, you know, nightstand guns, you know, it, it's kind of an important component of, of your home defense, you know. Uh, what qualifies as well? I, I gave my qualifications. Uh, what I thought was my perfect nightstand gun, and that was my um my Ruger GP100 and 357 Magnum. Now you might see it looks a little bit different again. Uh, I had the Badger grips on it. Love the Badger grips. Still love my made two videos about them. Uh, but like I said, I'm 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 kind of like a, a fucking little bunny rabbit with OCD. I saw some shiny. I saw these on the internet. Look at these inlays, right? How friggin' how cool is that? I had to have them. And uh, maybe I'll put a note in the thing because I forgot what where I got them from. Um, shit, I'll I'll put a note in at the end of the video uh, where they are. They were you know thirty bucks or so, and they they go right into the the irregular rubber grip frames here, the Ruger grips. Although these I think are the Ultimate grips. Um, but enough of that. Um, yeah, my GP one hundred was my nightstand gun, as I said, for a lot of reasons. Uh, it meets all the criteria that I, I think a nightstand gun should have. As I've said before, I am, I am nobody's tactical wizard. I'm no special operator. I'm not a secret agent in, in, in my alternate ego. Uh, this is just what I've come to in my training and experience, what I think a nightstand gun should have for close-up combat, rough and ready, tumbling, grabbing, gripping, right up against, using as a bludgeon type of thing uh, for size, weight, caliber, capacity, pointability, maneuverability, you know, and, and it guns really work itself in, by the way, you'll see during the shooting. Um, this was my, th th this was my choice of nightstand gun, but you know, other things could possibly fill that role. Uh, other calibers could fill that role. Um, more specifically, as you remember, I made a video about, uh, one of my fairly new purchases, my, my model 629, this is still filthy from the range, my model 629 that I, that I picked up. Why would a 357 be better than a 44 when this is still a stainless steel double action revolver? Just as good, even heavier if you want to crack someone over the head with it. Why that? Well, maybe this video would help to uh, to uh, answer some of those questions, as well as you know other other uh, firearms choices. Um, how it worked is I'll give you some disclaimers before I get into the, to the shooting. Um, I do not have my own private facility. I do not live upstate or in the free parts of this country where you can actually go out onto open land and exercise your Second Amendment rights and, and, and shoot at things. And the dog is back. Hold up. Come here. Of course, they're still making noise upstairs. Um, I can't do that. I have to go to a, a public range and be guided by the rules of that public range, which is run by the county. Uh, so I, I can't do all of that. So going into this, I'm going to try and simulate it as if, although I'd love to be laying in bed with a simulated nightstand next to you. Shut up. With a simulated nightstand next to you. So I'm not talking to myself. With a simulated nightstand next to me where I would spring up, grab, and turn fire. No, I can't do that. This range doesn't even let you work from a holster. So And it's dicey whether or not I could work from a table. So what I did was I went from a, a, a low ready my arm flat, low ready, and I'm, you're going to see me, I'm going to bring the gun up, get my top, my sight picture, and start firing. And I'm going to time the shots. I'm going to get off six rounds. Revolvers hold six, so that, that means I'm going to load my semi-autos with six, uh, just for, for, for make it easier on me, because, you know, I'm not getting paid for this. Um, I'm going to time it from the first shot. I'm not going to time it from how quickly it takes me to get my sight picture because that's not really indicative of the caliber characteristics so much as it is indicative of, of the firearm itself. And firearms vary. There are many different barrel lengths, 357, many different manufacturers, many different grip combinations, many different fucking everything when it comes to everything, okay? Uh, so, and also different guns have, as I've said, this one I find to be unwieldy, which is why it's not my favorite for this role. So it's going to take me a little bit longer, and for other reasons, I'll, I'll explain something else when it comes to this gun. 
Um, I don't want to make that part of the equation, how long it takes me to acquire my sight picture and to get the, my firing grip on it. I just want it to be from first shot to last shot, how many seconds it takes me to get six rounds off. And then after that, I'm going to show you the papers, uh, the, the target paper to, sh you know, the basic silhouette target. It's going to show you what type of accuracy I had within that time frame. And hopefully, by, you know, we'll be able to extrapolate from that information the size of the group, how accurate it was, if I missed any, uh, and how long it take me to get those six. You know, like I said, if, if I manage to get uh, six off in, in, you know, one, one and a half seconds, but the group is like this and I missed two shots, is that as good as taking three seconds to get a group this big? You be the judge, okay? Uh, now, what what uh, firearms did I use? Well, I already, you know, spoiler alert, I used my 357 Ruger um, to cover the 357 Magnum aspect of it. I'm also going to use this gun for the 38 uh, specials that I shoot, 38 special plus piece that, that I'm going to shoot. Um, mostly because I'm lazy. I mean, come on, I, I got to take out, a, I got to make, I have a 38 that I was brought anyway for my other video. I just didn't feel like doing it. I didn't feel like keep switching guns around. The, 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 the range officer was looking at me sideways as, as it was. So this is going to handle the 38 Special and the 357 aspect of it. 9mm, I went two rounds to two rounds. I, I went two ways. I went the old trusty uh, Glock 19 for my full size. And again, as I, as I mentioned in that, in that video, if this is your nightstand gun, you're doing good, my friend. 16 rounds to 9mm in, 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 in a service size pistol, you know, I, you know, you're good. The only reason why I didn't like semi-autos in general, if you have my reasons, semi-autos can be upset by this. And by this. This is a quick and dirty sit oh, oh, for the love of God. Get down. He doesn't like, you know, he doesn't like construction. He doesn't like the sounds of slides being racked either. This is, this is my burden, guys. Uh, my other 9mm choice is the 365 for a couple of reasons. Uh, I made an argument that whatever gun, you know, some people just have, this is the gun you might have. If you own one gun, well, this is your everything gun, isn't it? How will this do when compared to larger size, you know, semi autos and revolvers? How will this do in a quick bang bang type of situation? We're going to take a look. Plus, it gives me reason to tag this video to that. Hold on. Hey. Oh, Fucking dog. Plus, this gives me a, an excuse to tag this video to P365. Maybe I'll pick up another fucking 50 subscribers. Because this, this gun is viewing gold, apparently, on YouTube. So that's going to handle my 9mm duties. Uh, for my 44 Magnum, uh, I guess, you know, I've already let the cat out of the bag. 44 Magnum is going to be handled by my Model 629. I'm also going to shoot 44 Special through this. I don't know what percentage of the population I'm appealing to by doing 44 Special on this video. Um, of all the people that sleep with a gun by that nightstand, how many are using 44 Special? I don't know. So maybe all three of you will be watching this and give me a thumbs up and a like. Uh, but again, it is a caliber and I, it's, I could fire through this so it allows me to expand my... Uh, I, I gotta watch what I say about the dog on the camera because my wife's gonna watch this. Come on, get out of here. That'll handle that. And the 45 ACP is gonna be handled by my SR1911. Was the magazine in it? Yeah, it sure is. On my SR1911. Um, one, because 45 ACP is a viable self-defense caliber. Lots of people have 1911s or other firearms that, that use a 45 ACP. And uh, I just like shooting this gun. And I don't really have to look too hard to get an excuse to shoot it. And by the way, I don't know if I... Look at, that, look at what I did to the grips on this thing. I know, I changed things. I'm like a big fucking kid, right? Uh, but you got to admit, these are pretty sweet. Love this gun. A lot of fun to shoot this gun. Now, as far as the ammo that I used for... Uh, 44 Magnum, I used, um, I think for the actual test, I didn't use the 225 grain hornities. I don't think I did. No, I definitely didn't. I went for the, uh, the 200 grain, uh, the 200 grain hornities. This gives an example. What does this, this cost in New York? It costs $28.95 for this box of 20, uh, 44 Magnum. Um, and again, I, I'm, I'm a little weird also when it comes to, to rounds. I tend to, with 9mm, I tend to go right in the middle of weight for, for caliber, like 124 grains, because that's what I've always used via my PD, except for as you'll see in the other video, we, we, were light, we started off at 115 grains. Uh, for other calibers, I tend to go on the lighter side. I always like a little bit more speed over more weight, and especially, I mean, listen, 200 grains, it's not like, you know, this, this is not like this is 90 grain 3, this is 200 grains. 
if you can get the, if that four inch barrel can get this going at about 1400 feet per second well you know you, you're gonna feel it so this is what I, I tend to leave in, in in there so this is what I this is what was in the gun when I brought it to the range so I use this for the test and I also uh, I tried some of these uh, 225 grain um, hornings also while I was there uh, the nine millimeter as stated before the NYPD specials uh, for 38 special I went a little bit light for caliber too. I did this uh, 110 grain, uh, 38 special plus P's. Again, I like a little more velocity, especially when it comes to 38. For 357 Magnum, I was, I was pretty well standard. I went with the Hornady Critical Defense, uh, 127, um, 127 grain uh, jacketed hollow coin, right? These are, yeah, it's got that, that, that tip thing going on there. Right that's a 357 and for 45 ACP I brought a variety of stuff but for the test I used what I generally leave in this gun as my as my carry ammo and that's the, the federal HST which is a 230 grain uh, uh, standard pressure round but I've also been known to go with uh, again I like going light for caliber sometimes um, unless I'm walking through bear country the 185 grain uh, critical defense are pretty cool also and they have kind of a weird that's an interesting looking thing, right? So, that was my ammo selection. Um, before I get to the shooting, anything else you need to know about it? So, no, yeah, what, what you're gonna see is you're gonna see me at the range from that same stupid angle that you're probably all sick of now. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna start from a, a modified low ready. I'm gonna bring the gun up. I'm not gonna start the clock mm -hmm. until I actually shoot, get that first round off. It's gonna be a timing of first to last shot. Okay, and although I'd love to say that you're going to see like a little digital counter in the corner while I'm shooting so you can time yourself, uh, I don't really know how to do that, so you're not going to see that. So trust me when I say that I, I poured over this video footage, I timed it, um, you know, with a stopwatch and I came up with the, with the, the readings that you're, you're going to see. So I'm going to do the shooting, I'm going to show you the paper, then I'm going to wrap this all up and put a nice little bow on it, and uh, we'll take it from there. Signing, well, not signing off, but uh, let, let's, get, let's see some shooting now. Okay, first up is going to be everyone's darling, the P365. Again, if you're one of those, you know, rugged, one gun is enough for me, you go golfing with a putter and a driver, uh, one gun for me, and this is what's on your nightstand, you know, still 11 rounds of 9mm, uh, this is what you're going to go to. So, uh, let's see how it does on a nightstand type of situation. <laughs> Six shots in 2.83 seconds, and here's my group. Nice little group. Like I said, that this this gun shoots very nicely. Um, and uh, I quick quick sight picture. Great sights on this gun. I did mention that in the 365. Maybe I did. Uh, great sights on this gun. I, I like the look. I like the way it feels in my hands. I brought it right up again. Is it a little to the left? Well, my point of aim was probably to the left. Remember, if you saw, I'm just bringing it up and, sh and you know, trying to get a picture as quick as I can and shoot. And by the way, if, if I hit this person in that area with six shots in 2.83 seconds, whatever the hell it was, I think I'm still doing okay, right? On to the next one. Next up will be my trusty Glock 19. One of my best friends for 25 years. Uh, again, it's a it's a service size duty you know duty size pistol. Although it's called a compact, it's sixteen plus fifteen plus one, and it's a, this is a duty size pistol for for all intents and purposes carried by God knows how many people, how many police forces and militaries around the world. Um, let's see how it does as a nightstand gun. I'm guessing it's going to do pretty good. Six shots, two point five six seconds. Okay, a little quicker there, and, and you know, as you would expect. Uh, and again, a very nice group in a, in a very short amount of time. Uh, the Glock nineteen, look, it, it, it's a good shooter. It, it has its reputation for a reason, and I have a ton of experience with it. So um, you know, there you go. I know I'm still a little down to the left. Also, I guess you know I'm kind of rushing, so I'm kind of I'm, I'm kind of jerking everything to the left. Shut up. You know, kind of jerking everything to the left in this type of situation. It could be excuse for that. Uh, maybe it's just the strike of fire pistols I shoot that way also, you know, when I'm rushing myself. Uh, okay, on to the next. 
Our next contestant is going to be 38 Special, not in our case 38 Special plus P. And it's going to be fired, as I said, out of GP100 with, with my snappy psychedelic grips. Um, look, 38 Special out of a stainless steel double action revolver plus P is a very, very viable self-defense caliber and, and very good for this, you know, for all intents and purposes. It is this gun. Just you know, less powerful in 357 Magnum, which you know, it's no sin. Lots of things are less powerful in 357 Magnum. So you know, I I expect good things from this test. I expect it to be very controllable, very quick. And if what you have is a double action stainless steel 38 special revolver that can handle plus P rounds as your nightstand gun, again, give yourself a prize. I'm sure you're not going to go too far wrong. Let's see how it does. <laughs> Two point seven four seconds. Thirty-eight special. Six rounds. Thirty-eight special plus P. Again, nice group for defensive purposes. You know, again, I'm just bringing my sights on the target, pulling the trigger six times. Uh, and again, um, you're not going to go too far wrong. Thirty-eight special plus P out of, out of a good solid revolver. You're going to put six there in less than three seconds. You have successfully defended your life, I think. Uh, notice I'm, I'm a little, you know, more a little more centered. I'm, you know, I'm not going to. I'm not pulling anything anyway, get your mind out of the gutter. But I think this is, you know, a little more centered than, than the strike of 5.9. So maybe it's something I need to work on, maybe a little training there. Um, okay, on to the next. Next up, of course, the 357 Magnum. And since I had already gotten the gun dirty, this one pulled the double duty for me that day. Uh, what, nothing more needs to be said about this. I, I extol its virtues uh, to my heart's content on my previous videos. I love this gun. The GP100 is fantastic. It is worked in, it is smooth. The trigger is where I want it to be. It's just, it's just a, it's just a very good shooting gun. I'm comfortable with it. So um, let's see how she does uh, with some empirical evidence. Six rounds in 3.14 seconds. So a little slower by a few fractions of a second. And the group is a little more wide open as you would expect with the, the, the kick of a 357 Magnum. Um, still acceptable. And I can make a clear and convincing argument that a group this size of 357 Magnum will be more effective than a group this size of 38 Special Plus P. But you be the judge. Uh, for me, this is has pretty much proven what I always thought about the gun. This is a very good nightstand gun, a very good home defense gun. And, uh, you know, you're going to put a group like that out there and just a, a, a shade over three seconds, you're going to go a long way towards uh, def defending yourself. On to the next. Next up was 44 Special. 44 Special, as I mentioned, was going to come out of my Model 629 44 Magnum. Four inch barrel, um, you know, great gun. Uh, 44 Special is, uh, you know, I don't think it's anybody's favorite round. Uh, it's not something that I would ever carry or use for any type of real purpose. Uh, it's nice to take to the range just to just to shoot because it's, it's a soft shooting round, especially in such a big heavy gun like this, and especially after putting magnums through this, sometimes you like to take a little bit of vacation and blow off some 44 Special. Uh, it's not like it's significantly cheaper than anything, um, but it's just it's fun to shoot. And when I do stuff like this, uh, you know, 44 special. But if this is the gun you have, as uh, in the words of Paul, Har Paul Harrell, if you know 44 special is the gun you have, if you can't buy another gun because you live in a, 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 an awful state like New York or something that's even more awful like California, if that's the gun you have and it's just a, a gun you have in your family and you can't get anything else, you know. That's why you would have it. And again, I have a gun that shoots it, so I used it for this test. Let's see how it does. Two point seven three seconds, so pretty quick, but uh oh, see this little guy over here? I gotta miss with this gun. Yeah, you know, and, and I'm going to, after we do 44 Magnum, I'm going to talk more about this. But, uh, yeah, they're nice big holes, um, but, you know, and they're quick. But who knows if that was the first one, and he's on me because of that miss. 
this is a decent enough group. And again, they're 44 caliber holes. Uh, so, you know, again, I have no horse in this race. 44 specialists is kind of a, uh, I did it for a lark, you know, but uh, something to think about with that miss. Okay, uh, now we're up to the 44 Magnum. Um, you know, this is the one that I think, you know, I was waiting for, I was most interested in, and I guess maybe some other people waiting for too, uh, because this one out of all the guns I'm, I used here, this is the one that fits the parameters that I feel are important for a, a nightstand gun. This is a, a heavy stainless steel double action revolver firing a very effective round. And, you know, other than 357, this is, you know, this is it. Uh, I, in the previous video, I mentioned some things that I, I held against it, but you can't argue the power of 44 Magnum uh, round as, as an effective self-defense round for, or anything round. Maybe you shoot planes with it. Um, there's one thing I feel I should mention here that I should have mentioned at the beginning of the video. There's a parameter of the test that I didn't say. I wanted to, uh, for purposes of, of this nightstand, specific nightstand type of um, uh, testing, I wanted to bring it in a little closer than the uh, seven yard FBI uh, shooting up uh, distance that, that we've been hearing all these years. I figured, you know, I think even even in the, the original video, I made that, that pop culture reference to the Terminator movie where you're laying in bed, and the, the guy's laying in bed and, and Arnold Schwarzenegger is standing right over him. So for these purposes, I wanted to bring it in close and also to get a quicker sight picture and bang, bang, you know, try and get six out there as if the purse was right on top of you, because that's the, 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 the most likely uh, scenario that I see for a nightstand gun. And it was working fine until I got to this gun. Now this is this is foreshadowing people. Until I got to this gun. Uh, I left in, the, I had a bit of an outtake. I, I left it in, I'll, I'll, I'll start the segment off with the outtake and then I'll get to the actual six, successful six round test. Uh, I had the target not right on top, but maybe about five yards away, you know, somewhere in that thing a little bit closer. And uh, it all went well until about the second or third shot when the concussion from five yards away out of this gun kind of blew half the, 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 the target down range. And you can see, I think, you know, on my third shot, you see me trying to track it, you know, and then I'm like, what the hell am I doing? This is stupid. Uh, so I, I, I pulled the target and had to reset the test. And from then, I, I pushed everything out to just shy of the seven-yard range uh, for this gun anyway. And for, and for yeah, just actually this, this gun... Uh, I didn't redo the whole test for, from this. I pushed it back a little bit further for this gun. So this gun had a little bit of a disadvantage in that it was, you know, a few feet further back because, you know, I just, you can't get close with this thing. And I don't want to set the paper on fire either or launch the target down range. And also, um, even with that greater distance, the concussion was still kind of billowing the paper target. So maybe some of these hits might not be as accurate as, as they might have been because the paper's moving a little bit. And look, folks, we do what I, I work with what I have to work with. Someday, someday, if I can make a little thought balloon here, someday I'm thinking of owning property upstate where I could set up solid targets, reactive targets, maybe dummies, and I could do all. Wait till you see the videos I'm going to make in that far flung future. It's, it's going to be spectacular. But for now, this is what I have to work with. So the Magnum had a little bit, a slight disadvantage, but really a few more feet shouldn't have made that much of a difference. Here we go. And as we see, uh, six rounds of 44 Magnum in 3.73 seconds. So it's the slowest. And again, I have a miss. Now, is that a flyer? Is that the first rounds that I was trying to acquire my sights? Is it just the power of the gun and I was getting worse as it went along? I don't know. Uh, I'll get into my thoughts on this. I, I have some theories on this. It's possible explanations for this uh, when I wrap this video up. But as you see here, again, a good group with one flyer. If the flyer is the last round, well then I put five 44 Magnums right there. The flyer is not going to matter anyway. Uh, if that's the first round, I could be in some trouble. Uh, but it might be a little more indicative of how I shoot that gun than, than the, the, the round itself and how controllable it is. Um, but again, you know, 44 Magnum, that's, that, that, that's what we get.
And our last contestant, 45 ACP out of my SR uh, 1911, Ruger 1911. Um, boy, do I love this gun. It is, it is pretty, it is accurate, it is fun to shoot, it is just a, a piece of American history, steel and, and, and single action only trigger, sweet Jesus, I love this gun. But it also has uh, very important things going against it as I outlined in my previous video as to why I don't think it would be my nightstand gun, despite the potency of the 45 ACP cartridge. Most importantly, or the, uh, the first on the list, picking this up from a dead sleep, you got this grip safety thing going. You got this manual safety thing that you have to contend with. And then once you get past all that stuff, by the time you bring it up on, you have the whole semi-automatic taking out a battery thing as you're wrestling, as you're wrestling what happens. Um, so, you know, it has some strikes against it. So even if, I don't care if I get six rounds off in, in a half a second, it's just not my choice. And uh, I'm going to cut away to the shooting first, but there's going to be two shooting segments on this one. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Uh-oh, what happened there? I'll tell you what happened there. Remember what I said in my early video about nightstand guns? Coming out of a dead sleep, dealing with manual safeties on a gun, and I said, you know, maybe you can do it, but I'm not John Wick or something that along those lines. Well, that's exactly what I did. I was not under duress. I was just trying to get shots off quickly in a public range, well-lit public range, and I still failed to disengage the manual safety. That's broad daylight. I'm wide awake in a public range under with no danger that I may be getting thrown out, Okay. I still forgot to thumb off this safety. I'm going to do this being woken up out of a dead sleep. And for those of you that are going to say, well, you know, training, 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 training. Come on, man. I mean, that's a lot of fucking training. All right. Not when there are other options available to me. So, again, I love this gun, but unless it's my only gun, not going to be my winner here. But with that said, let's see how it did. Six rounds of 45 ACP in 2.76 seconds. It did very well. I expected it to do well. It's a great gun. There's a reason why it was our service pistol for what? 75 fucking years? How many wars? 1911s are effective. They work. They are great sidearms. And, you know, there you go. And it's fast, too. Uh, but for purposes of this, as I shown in that little first snippet of a, of a, of a video that I gave you, just not for me. There's no amount of training in the world that's going to convince me that I'm going to wake up out of a dead sleep in the dark and bring that weapon to bear as fast as I could, a strike of five semi a 9mm or a double action revolver. But still, great job by the 1911. Okay, so what do we learn here? What can we take away from all this? Well, what we can take away from all this, that is, after this test, my choice of nightstand gun is still my Ruger GP100 and 350 caliber 357 Magnum. Um, for the following reasons, and I'll, I'll, I'll go through the list of guns here and, and, and give you my results. Uh, my quickest time was with my trusty Glock 19. It was a time of 2.56 seconds to get six rounds uh, center mass. And oddly enough, if you notice at those targets, I'm not going to, if you want to go back and look at them, did you notice um, my groups were to the left with semi-autos and to the right with revolvers. I'm sure there's a scientist out there that's going to be able to explain why that is. But again, they were all center mass enough for me to be happy with it, especially since it was quick point shoot type of shit. Well, anyway, my quickest time was with the uh, the Glock 19. And as I also might have mentioned two seconds ago, it fucking should be. Okay? I've carried this gun since 1994. That's fucking 25 years, man. Okay? I've trained with this gun. I put 10,000 rounds through this gun. I've carried it on, off duty. I've shot with it. I've done tactical drills with it, reload drills with it, fucking failure drills with it. I've taken it apart, put it back together God knows how many fucking times. I should be the best with this gun. Okay? And a Glock 19 is a great gun. I said it. I'll say it again. If this is your gun, if this is your nightstand gun, you're doing a good job. It's 16 rounds of 9mm in a rock-solid, reliable package great gun. The only reason why, or a couple of little reasons why I think it loses out, 
is the whole out of battery thing and the fact that it's made out of plastic. And it, it, it sure it'll hurt, but how much is it going to hurt? And it's a semi oil. I mean, you know, for purposes of close combat, hand to hand on top of people type of shit, it just falls a little short for those reasons. As a gun, as a caliber, good fucking choice. But I have other options. Coming in second place, 44 special. <laughs> 2.73 seconds out of a 44 special. Now, I did miss one. Okay, and I'm going to get into that in a second. I did miss one, but 44 special, fast firing round, I guess, because it's very controllable. This is a very heavy gun, and 44 special does not kick at all. So, 44 special, that's really all I'm going to say, because again, I don't care if I got off six rounds in a half a second. I'm not fucking using 44 special. Okay, it's just not, it's not, not, not caliber for me. Next up, 38 special. 2.74 seconds. Well, I, 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 well I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say that. It's right behind the, the, the 44 Special and fairly close to my Glock 19. Uh, third, I'm not going to show 357, but 38 Special plus P. And those, those are, I got to tell you, um, those Hornadies, they're fucking, they're, they're hot 38 Specials. Um, I, I fired a few of them out of, uh, out of my wife's J-Frame and that makes that gun very unpleasant to shoot. Even in this, uh, it, it, it didn't like, you know, it's a heavy gun, so it didn't, didn't, didn't kick my ass, but you was not, I, I'm going to do following this video. I think my next video, I, I was going to do something with 38 single action and double action, but I'm also going to do a comparison between 44 Magnum and 357 Magnum. And in that I did that a few of those strings of, you know, where I fired three 44 specials. I did a video where I fired three 44 specials and then three 44 Magnums in the same, out of the same cylinder to show you the difference. I did that a few times with 357. I took some video of that for this another video that I'm going to do. And uh, those 38s, those plus Ps, those Hornadies, it's not as slam dunk. Like, you know, in that previous video, you saw that 344 Specials were joking that 44 Magnum was jumping all over the place. It's not that noticeable. It's not that slam dunk out of GP100 between 38 and 357. So those Hornady 38 plus Ps, 110 grains... You know, you might want to consider them. Uh, and again, that if what you have is a 38 special that can handle it, you, you load a hot 38 special plus P uh, round in there, you're not doing bad. It gets all the advantages that I talked about of being a quick, dirty, close-up fighting gun. And 38 special at that range is nothing that I want to get shot with. So, you know, not a bad choice. Uh, next up, the 45 ACP. Uh, no surprise there either, 2.76 seconds, uh, right behind those light shooting 44 special and, and 38 special rounds, and, and just a, a hair's breadth behind my Glock 19 that I've trained, uh, you know, for a quarter of a century with. Uh, and the reason why is that because 1911s are great guns. I'm sorry if you were 1911 haters out there, too bad. I love them. This is not going to be my only 1911. I intend to get a few. This one I'll get duplicates of, of various makes manufacturers, all firing 45 ACP. I just love 1911s, and they're expensive. That's why I don't have fucking six of them right now, okay? And I don't have a Patreon account, so you guys can't help me. But, you know, uh, I love the gun. I love it. I love it. Shoots great points, great great trigger. Everything about it is fantastic. I'm fast with it, accurate with it, and not going to be on my nightstand. I did it all. I showed you why. Uh, but just so you know, very good, very accurate, fast shooting gun. Next up, 365. At 2.83 seconds, again, just behind the 1911, a single action trigger and a gun this size, a grip this big, and I was able to bring this to bear tenths of a second behind it and put six right on target in a, in a very tight group, actually a tighter group than a 1911. This gun really does it all. Now, I wouldn't do nightstand for all the reasons that I'm not going to keep repeating myself as to why I don't like semi-autos and plastic semi-autos for that role. But if this is what you got, this is all you can afford, if this is what it is, and you have this on, it's a loaded gun, so I'm not going to fuck around with it. Uh, if this is what you got, and this is what you what you can bring to bear, this is a serious little fucking gun, man. This thing, it, it's no joke. So, very good SIG 365. There's a reason why it's, it's so popular. Then we were getting down the list, you know. And, uh, where's my favorite gun? Well, now here it is. Back to the GP100 uh, 357 Magnum. Uh, 3.14 seconds. So, a little slower. Uh, you know, the, the fastest came in at 2.56. This is 3.14. This is, you know, again, we're getting fractions of a second behind, you know. Um, but why is this still my winner? It's still my winner because it puts six rounds on target of 357 Magnum. 357 Magnum, pound for pound, is 
my favorite self-defense caliber. You could agree, you could disagree. For me, 357 Magnum is is the 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 the, the, the sun and the moon. It is what you need. It will work. It will work against people. It'll work against animals. You could load it heavy. You could load it light. I mean, heavy light. I mean, bullet weight. Um, you can do all kinds of things with it. It's carryable. It's concealable in various packages. Now, they sell those small J frames and, and, and LCR Rubers and 357 Magnum. Um, not that I wouldn't carry them. They sure as fuck it's funny. They're not going to be fun to shoot. But, you know, it's just a very versatile caliber. Its biggest drawback is that it pretty much only, it's an exclusively a revolver car- uh, uh, a caliber. But again, if you like revolvers, I like revolvers. I was, I cut my teeth on revolvers. I was trained on revolvers initially, and this is what I knew was revolvers. So a lot of my shooting style still is revolver based, even you see how I hold my hands with semi autos. Um, so with that aside, it's that stainless steel revolver type of thing. It's that durability, reliability. It's the whole thing of, when I say reliability, not, I'm not one of those people think, oh, you know, semi autos semi- don't fucking malfunction. They very rarely malfunction unless it's a manufacturing defect. But revolvers have less shooter-induced malfunctions. That failure to remove the to, to, to thumb of safety, that was a malfunction. Not the gun's fault, it's my fault, but it's a shooter-induced malfunction. And it's a type of malfunction that will never occur with a revolver. This is a waking up out of a dead sleep situation. I don't want to have to think about shit. I don't want to have to think about limp wristing. I don't want to have to think about getting the slide blocked. I don't want to sleep and think about where to get caught up in covers. This is a dead sleep nightstand gun. I like revolvers, and if you're going to go with a revolver, 357 is your best all-around caliber for me. And finally, taking up the rear, a 44 Magnum, um, for a couple of reasons. Uh, it's 3.73 seconds, so it's exactly a second behind... The 44 Special 2.73. It's way behind my Glock 19 at 2.56. It's only, you know, half a second slower than the 357 Magnum, but I missed one with this. Now, why did I miss? Um, you say this thing kicked like hell. I could see why you'd miss because you kept on getting off target. But why'd you also miss with the 44 Special? That's why I say it might not be caliber so much as this gun. Now, I love this gun. It's beautiful. It's a stainless steel beautiful work of art this will be one of those heirloom guns the guns that i'm talking about this will go to the one of the great grandkids this will go to one of the great grandkids so will this and hopefully my big collection of 1911s that i'll have before i die um this is a great gun but it's not necessarily a great gun for me at least not for the amount of shooting that i've done with the amount of training i've done with it and i'll i'll give you a reason now i don't want to you know what maybe i will pause this video because i want to show you something and we're back. This, let me introduce you or reintroduce you to my Model 64 38 Special Smith & Smith & Wesson Revolver, okay? This is the revolver that I carried for the first four years of my career in the NYPD. Uh, when they issued it to me, it didn't have the hammer spur because it was double action only. I'm doing a video on that, by the way. Uh, since I've retired, I've, I brought it to a gunsmith and hadn't turned it into an actual gun again. Um, so I had the double and single action capability on it. This is the gun that I received my training on, and most of my training on. This is the gun that I carried. I carried this under duress. I carried this for four years, the first four years in the NYPD from 1990 to 1994. Now, yeah, I had a Ruger Speed 6 for the first six or seven months of that, but I'm going to consider it revolver, okay, double action revolver. Um, they all kind of came the same way. Um, these are my sights on this gun, okay? Uh, a trench with a simple post. Very, 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 very low profile. This is what I was used to. Then I transitioned over to a Glock. And I mentioned previously, low bore axis, low sights. This is the sight picture that I'm used to getting. Wait, can I do it? There you go. Do my trick shots. Okay. That's what I'm used to. Uh, for a revolver, you know, you say low bore axis. Well, you know, for a revolver, it, it's kind of what I'm talking about. Okay. There's something about... This gun, of all the guns that I've purchased and owned and sold since, I can't wrap my fucking mind around this high post sight. Now, these sights are by far superior to that Model 64. But for some reason, I just can't bring this gun up to eye level. And I've tried grips. 
this gun just fights me. It fights me all the way. Maybe it doesn't like me. Maybe it's possessed by somebody. I don't know. This gun fights me. I just find this gun sits very high above my hand, and I can't find these fucking sights as fast as I could find other sights. I don't understand it. So the fact that if I missed one with the 44 Magnum, I could say it's kicking all over the fucking place, and it was. I missed one with the 44 Special. I think barely moves. You could fall asleep firing a 44 Special out of this gun. I, that's why I want to say that was probably the first shot. I just can't find these sights fast enough. So that's really an indictment on me. It's not really an indictment on the gun. Um, so, you know, I'll take blame for that. Maybe I need to train a lot more. Maybe I need to expand my horizons to get used to various sight pictures on various guns. I, I get that. Um, but even if you remove that miss out of the equation, it was still much slower. And I was the one shooting it. And I could tell you, it was difficult to bring that thing back on target. It felt slower. I felt time passing as I was shooting it. So for that reason, again, if it was, well, I got to go from this to a 38 special. Well, you know, I'll still go, I'll go this because, you know, 44 Magnum is, is, is the balls, all right? But when I have an option of going to a 357 Magnum that I didn't miss with, is a half a second faster, and it brings the whole package to bear, it's the, the 357, you know, it, it wins on that account. Um, so that's basically my thing that, you know, look, you take away from it what you want. Now, this is when I say this is my nightstand gun. I'm not saying here, and I say, you know, we always have to have these disclaimers on these videos. I'm not saying here that this is going to be your fucking nightstand gun. If you pick something else, you're an idiot. No, this is my reasons. I'm, I'm an old, I'm over 50 years old. I, I have certain affinity for certain things. I'm set in my ways. And, you know, uh, my, my years of training experience are in a certain, are in a certain direction, okay? This is what I'm comfortable with. These are my reasons. If you agree with my reasons, then you might want to consider some of these firearms that, I, that, that I've showed you. You might want to consider 357 Magnum Revolver for this purpose, if you agree with my reasons. If you don't, well, then I'm sure you have your own reasons, and I'm sure they don't involve throwing darts at a fucking board, you know? I mean, it's, th there's a reason why you like it. Now, there are also reasons why, even if you don't, you know, you, you, you look, this might be the only gun that you have for a lot of reasons. This might be the only gun that you have for a lot of reasons. You know, there might be there might be financial reasons why you don't have all these guns. There might be uh, legal reasons why you don't have all these guns. Now, look, you know, I, I'm I'm kind of a, a, a an odd case. I I, I live in a um, an oppressive communist state like New York. Yet I get to carry. I, I could select any almost any gun that I want. I can not only buy it and keep it. I can carry it. That is very very unusual for New York. And the only reason I can do that is because almost 30 years in law enforcement, being a retired law enforcement officer, the, 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 the government has graciously allowed me to exercise my Second Amendment rights to bear arms because of that. All I have to do is give almost 30 years of my life to, to, to get that right. Uh, other people in New York, they, they just don't. In fact, someone asked me about, you know, how come you get to carry in New York? They didn't think anybody could carry in New York. Well, yeah, you can. You could be an active cop or retired cop or, you know, be in bed with a politician. Other than that, you know, nah, not, not so much. Um, you can own a gun in New York, though. Uh, other than that stupid 10 round magazine restriction, 10 round magazine restriction that we have there, you could get a permit and buy a gun and keep it in your home. Just carrying these things you, you, you can't have. So it hasn't gotten that bad yet. Um, but you know, I have options and these are the options that I explained and why I chose this one out of all the options that I have. If you don't have as many options, go with what you have. If you think, you know what, I'm not fighting with anybody. I'm going for highest capacity and, you know, Glock, go with a Glock, go with a Glock 17, go with a Glock, whatever the fuck. Have a magazine out to here if, if, if you can legally have it, you know, more power to you if you live in a free state. Um, that's, you know, you do what you do. You do you. I'm just giving my opinion. So that's, that's just my opinion. And in my opinion, nightstand gun, 357 Magnum out of a stainless steel revolver. And uh, and th I, I like the 3-inch barrel too, but you, you can go 4 inches on it. But for me, I explain why I like the 3-inch barrel also. It's just an all-around good package. So as always, uh, thank you for your views. Thank you for any comments you, you choose to leave me, uh, positive and negative. Um, again, I'm still not giving anything away because I don't, I don't get paid for this. There's a ton of ammunition. I'm going to have to work some overtime to, to, to get that money back. Uh, my next project, I think, uh, I alluded to it. I think I'm going to do a uh, comparison, 357 to 44, just overall handling characteristics. Um, and I'm, I also want to get on that video. I think I mentioned that I want to do a, um, a 38 special uh, single or double action, the purposes of why you would want lean towards one or the other, like a double action only. And when is shooting single action really come into, uh, 
into play in a real world situation. I did a little extra footage on that. It's not going to be as comprehensive as these other two videos that I'm, that I'm kicking out now. But hey, you know, we work with what we can. Other than that, thanks for your views and uh, see you next time. God. And, uh, you know, what, and also, uh, you know, but, uh, uh.